it could be, you know, you grew up this way and you grew up in the middle of the middle of nowhere. Your mother always told you, hey, you do it this way. And so you did it that way. And then when you see how big the world is, people's minds, they're open to all these different cultures and, you know, different religions and everything. So for me, man, I, I think if I can't, you know, make people travel the world and see all these experiences, I try to give them stories. Yeah, I do. All right, let me tell you this story. All right, okay. Break it down. This, this is the story. So this little girl, maybe you guys have heard this. This was crazy when I heard it because it just stopped me in my tracks. So the story was, this little girl went to her mom. She said, hey, mom, why do you always cut the, you know, the butt off of the ham and put it in the pan this way? The mom said, you know what? You, you, my mother always did it that way. Your grandma always did it that way. The girl keeps asking my mom, why are you always cutting butt off a hand and put it in the pan that way? She's like, I told you already. My mother did it. Your grandmother did it. So the little girl calls grandma up. She's like, grandma, I talked to mom. She told me, you know, she always puts the butt in, in the ham in, in the oven this way, in the pan like that. She had to learn it from you. Grandma said, well, sweetie, I was doing it because, that, you know, that we had to fit it in the pan. <laughs> our, our pan was only this big. That's what we had to do. I got no, I have no idea why your mama's doing it. She don't need to. <laughs> and then, and then it was funny to me because I thought about my own life. You know, my mom always used to tell me we used to have the lights on in the back seat. She'd be like, "Boy, cut the lights off. I can't see nothing." Yeah. Right? And, yeah. as, and as an adult, yeah. I, I remember my son had the light on the other day, and I was like, "You know what? I can still see." I don't know why she was <laughs> always saying that, but I used to tell my son that too. So I finally looked and was like, "Man, you know what?" I don't know if the lights are different now, or what, but, you know? And it just made me think, All that, we're always taught things and we just probably just do them without even thinking about it, right? Wow. Just the way my mom told me, my grandmother told me, so. And um, I memorized it. And so one day at school, I built a house out of blocks to show my mom how, how much I loved her. And I knew when she came to pick me up from school that day, she would see this house I built. And so, in school, this kid knocked over my blocks. Mm. And I was livid. And I was ready to fight with the only weapons I had, which were my words. So I went up to him and I said, those were my blocks that you flipped. Lest you want a quick payback, better fix my quick block stack. <laughs> and he started crying. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh, man, you have good then. And then when my mom came to school, she, they were like, the teachers were like, Mrs. Alexander, we have a problem. Your son Kwame is arrogant. He intimidates the other kids with his words. <laughs> and my mom said, thank you. <laughs> we teach him to use his words. That's so, so, yeah, I miss her. That's good. Yeah, I miss my mom, too. I, but if there's anything I could ever do, yeah, I want to teach you. You know, I know we're doing this here, but yeah. I got to get your number. You, yeah. you going to give me your number, man? In front of everybody, they hear you now. I got you. I got All you. Right. <laughs> um, and then? So I think that dovetail, dovetails nicely into the, our last question. Um, I wrote a book about a 12 year old boy who likes a girl and he has a cousin who is a bully and his cousin likes the same girl and his cousin beats him in everything mm. racing wrestling but he's a good swimmer and so his best friend says why don't you challenge your cousin to a swim off and if you beat him in swimming, then maybe you'll win the heart of the girl. It's, it's like, that's a good idea. And so he challenges his cousin and he practices and he goes down to the river and he's swimming and he's getting faster and no one can swim as fast as he can. And he's learned how to kick like a fish, like it's on. And so the night before the big swim off, he goes down to the river to get one last practice session in. And even though he's been told not to go to the river at night because the river is cursed. Mm. But he, he convinces his brother to take him. It's just one time. And he's in that water and he is gliding and sliding and moving and grooving and swishing and splashing and it is on. He's going to win. And he comes out of the water and his brother is not there. And what happens, I cannot tell you. 
<laughs> but I, but it is in the most difficult and challenging book that I have ever written. And it comes out in September. It's called The Door of No Return. You all have been great. Thank y'all so much. Yeah.